The show's called The Road to Go. Let's talk about the Gold Cup itself. Um, so this goes to post on Friday the 15th. And at this stage in the betting, presenting Percy is very short, right, for a Gold Cup at this stage, Ollie? Is it like, so 11 to 4 is the price we're looking at at the moment. Uh, an amazing horse. We did a show with uh, Davey Russell recently and looking back at the performances that presenting Percy has put in at Cheltenham. It's like zooming up the hill every time, but yeah. Gold Cup's different, right? Yeah, look, he's got an unbelievable Cheltenham record. The thing with presenting Percy, he's trained by Pat Kelly, who's a, a bit of an enigma, a bit of a, you know, silent assassin in many ways, because he's impossible to interview. <laughs> he should be a really popular horse, but I think punters and racing fans are a little bit frustrated with him, because he was meant to run in the Red Mills, he might run this week, he ran over hurdles last time. No one really knows where they stand with presenting Percy on a week-to-week -week basis. In terms of talent, he's more than capable of winning a Gold Cup. But I don't think quite yet he has that public following that, say, a native river has, who's just a real war horse. He ran really well in the King George. I think there will be a lot of people that back presenting Percy because on form and ability, he's more than capable of winning a Gold Cup. But I think the neutral, if you like, would probably be cheering on a different horse. I know we're in Ireland and I don't want to be sort of saying anything sort of Go on. Uh, there's controversial. No, but, but my point is, I don't, I don't think there are many people, particularly in the UK, I think that's, uh, that's that the would thing. be cheering presenting Percy on over, say, a native river, just because no one really knows where they stand with presenting Percy. We had... We had <laughs> Sorry? <laughs> I, uh, I love presenting Percy and Ireland, by the way. Just to be <laughs> <laughs> He's a real crowd pleaser. Um, we had uh, Davy Russell on the night <clears throat> of the Thyestes, and uh, a few reporters who were in Gorham Park that day said that the scenes were reminiscent of Donoli and that certainly presenting yeah. Percy has ca captured the Irish attention but we see him so rarely that it, that probably hasn't yet transcended it's the national it's boundaries. It's frustrating for racing fans wherever you are in the world want to see the best horses run and want to know where they stand with the best horses and the simple fact is that presenting Percy is meant to run last week he's meant to run this week he hasn't run last week he might not run this week we don't really know what's going to happen with presenting Percy. That, there is an element of sort of charm to that. There's like a bit of excitement. Is it's he, the enigma, Will he, yeah. won't he? But it can be a bit frustrating. In terms of ability, presenting Percy could very well be lifting the, uh, the Gold Cup in, in March. I, I, he's, he's every reason to be favourite on ability. Brian, what do you think? It's wide open. I, look, I disagree with people giving out about Pat Kelly. Like, Pat Kelly is about five horses in training. It's different with Gordon and Willie. They've... 50 runners each in Cheltenham. Like he's Pat Kelly's only horse going to Cheltenham, so he believes in himself that he can get him there in as good a condition as anybody else. And if he thinks by doing that he doesn't have to run him from Gorn to now, well then I, I, I can't see why. You know, if you owned the horse, would you want to run him on good ground over the last couple of weeks? My issue is not with Pat Kelly. It's more, well, to a point it is. It, it's because <laughs> he won't talk to you on ITV if he, he won't talk to me <laughs> he actually I have a funny story no, <laughs> you know Johnny Ward yeah. Yeah. I've never tried to interview him um, and I'm sure he'd say no if I did but <laughs> he went off to Johnny Ward in Gorn yeah and, and there's a video of him going oh can I say? and he goes no Johnny <laughs> or, he said to Johnny he said look Johnny you saw exactly what I saw you can write whatever the fuck you want in the paper go away yeah. <laughs> Johnny was just standing there like nobody <laughs> it's, it's not necessarily the point with, with Pat Kelly deciding that he he's going to go there without a prep run. It's more the tease of it all. That, like we, for example, on ITV, we showed, the, we showed Gorham for the first time on ITV, which is amazing. We showed it, and we were able to see Henry de Bromhead and Rachel Blackmore win with Monolee, which again is amazing. But imagine that to the racing yeah. fans that think yeah. presenting Percy is going to run. It's, it's kind of good to see these stars to attract racing to a yeah. wider audience. And it's just a bit frustrating Maybe from a... Maybe after race, we're paying him a few quid. Not <laughs> yeah. 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 Hang over. fire, fairy house <laughs> next week. But it, we, we want to see these Gold Cup stars as much as we can. It's a very selfish reason why I want to see him more. But uh, if Pat... Look, Pat knows the time of day. We saw it with Maldini. We've seen it with Presenting yeah, It just wouldn't surprise me if he goes there and wins the Gold Cup. Oh, completely. Because man's a genius. Now, obviously, it's a, it's a yeah. big ass, but... Oh, I, I do. Do you fancy him? I genuinely do, yeah. I just thought the... His performance last year in the RSA was, uh, was outstanding. Like it's a, that's a tough race. It's a real grueler of a race. And he genuinely jumped to last like he just jumped in. Now, Davey gave him a fantastic ride as well. He went around the inside the whole way. But I think he's a horse with a lot of ability. And he'll be a lot sharper from the run and go. And I'd say he's, a quite, he's an idle little horse. But like in Cheltenham, he won seven or eight lengths that day. You know, he quickened up the hill. Zoomed up the hill, yeah. Yeah, so he's obviously got a massive engine. And 
just wouldn't surprise me. I put it this way now, if I was ranked to ride him, I wouldn't be saying no. Yeah. I, think, I think he's the best horse in the race. Yeah, ability-wise anyway, yeah. Because yeah. I don't think the ground is soft, going to be soft enough for the English horses. Kate, I think I'm right in saying that when we did this show in Clamell, Sizing John was still he was, always good. He was, and sadly, and sadly no, he's not in the picture anymore, which is a big blow to us. But um, look, I think the Gold Cup this year is wide open. I think it's a bit of a mystery because it's been a very unusual year in the sense that we've had very unusual weather sense. I think everyone today will see it felt like spring and it's only February. And um, I myself, I actually uh, walked up the, walked to Cheltenham today and it, the ground felt good enough. So like, it's gonna be a strange Gold Cup. It's gonna be, a lot of horses haven't run. I was very impressed by Monerly last weekend. He's a horse that's been running. He's been running on the good ground. Henry has, and he's going to have the experience this year. A lot of horses are going to go to Cheltenham, and the Gold Cup's going to be a big field this year. It's not going to take your, pr like, you're going to have to get out there, and it's going to be a grueler. And I think a lot of horses are going to lack match fitness and practice. Because, like, to be in that grade one sense, they've got to be sharp, they've got to be. And I was impressed at Monerly um, last weekend, and I think he could go there with a, Good each way chance. Yeah, right, Monley, about 25 to 1 at the Henry's moment. in the crowd there. <laughs> I think he could give us a word, could he? <laughs> <laughs> is he, is he going to run in the Gold Cup? I don't know. Is he going to run in the Gold Cup, Henry? Is Henry here? <laughs> Let's get a mic down there. <laughs> Henry, you're live on ITV. <laughs> <laughs> is he going to run the Gold Cup? No, I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't want Pat Kelly on ITV. <laughs> <laughs> Henry, are you running the Gold Cup? Off the ball can step in here and save this uh, Anglo-Irish debate. Are, are we going to get some news about the I Gold Cup? I told you I was going to get you up. <laughs> <laughs> no news in the Gold Cup. Ooh. But is that a maybe? Ooh. Well, I think you should go, Henry. <laughs> we tried. He's a very, very... Monolith's a great horse. He's a lovely horse. Uh, Paul, what do you think of the Gold Cup? I think um, Rhodes respects... Uh, shh, shh. when he won in down ride was uh, the Gold Cup sort of a sort of a contention horse yeah, and yeah. he was unlucky the last couple of times I think nothing went right the last day or the time before um, so I'd, I'd be happy now if I'd be, I think uh, no one will have a great chance in it ok so road to spec we're in about uh, 12 to 1 at the moment let's quickly go through some of the other days before we uh, we really Jarlath has a slightly contentious view that jockeys don't actually matter in horse <laughs> racing which he's going to defend in a couple of minutes' time. Well, yeah, I actually right. do have one tip, though. I do have one tip, and it's an absolute cert. So get your pens out right now. This is definitely going to happen. Uh, Post-race, you're going to get some really terrible interviews with jockeys, that's for sure. <laughs> you're going to be you're going to be like really in it, like, oh, my God, this is an amazing moment, surely. And the response you're going to get is, oh, yeah, sure, just, I'm just really happy for uh, everybody involved. <laughs> Tell me, is that frustrating at a certain point? where you're just like, Christ, just give me something to work with here. I'll be honest with you, it probably means I'm not doing my job very well. <laughs> <laughs> I probably need to ask better questions. Do you know what the thing is with Cheltenham, which I think is this year so good, and the Gold Cup is a prime example of it. A lot of the time, and in recent years, you've seen big powerhouse owners, Ridge Rich, and I'm not knocking them having big race successes because they put a lot of money into the sport. Ridge Rich, he, Jig and Sound have had a lot of success in the last two or three years. Going into Cheltenham this year, there is a massive spread of different trainers, owners, horses that have live chances and jockeys as well. So I do think you'll get a lot of really lovely reactions to okay. winners and hopefully that's borne out in, in the coverage that everyone's showing of the Gold Cup and the Cheltenham Festival. Well, I'll but take that bet. Essentially, uh, I need to ask better questions. <laughs> <laughs> it's a long and short bit. Let's uh, cycle through some of the other races here. Um, John, we might start with uh, Tuesday, right? The champion hurdle is the 12th of March. Uh, at the moment, Apples, Jade, Bouverdeer, round about 15 to 8, Lorena about 7 to 2, Sharjah leads the betting after that. What do you think? Um, yeah, I would just re re reiterate, Jera, what everybody said about the Gold Cup. I think it's wide open, and I think he, he could be looking for a couple of outsiders, each way outsiders. Ele Elegant Escape won the Welsh National, is a stayer, and Balco de Flo is not a horse I would discount after winning the Ryanair Chase last year. Henry de Bromhead is in the audience again. Um, but the champion hurdle... Um, uh, like I think with Lorena, we don't we don't know how good Lorena is, and that's the big mystery. Lorena could be like Alderbrook could come and win the race um, quite easily. I think Ruby will ride her. I think Melon is overpriced at about twenty to one. Uh, nearly won the race last year. I think Melon will show his best form at Cheltenham. I think at twenty to one he's overpriced. Uh, Willie had some favourable comments on the At the Races uh, website about him. Um, 
but I think the horse to beat, and, and Brian might back, back me up here, is Apple's Jade. Second in the Triumph Hurdle at the course, um, won by half the track and soft ground at Aintree, and has been brilliant this season. I think she, she'd be in much better form coming to Cheltenham than, than she was last season. I think Apple's Jade is the one to beat. It all depends. Make sure she doesn't come in season. Yeah. <laughs> that, that famous cycle, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, so Apple's Jade is the one to beat for me, but I think Madden is an each way price. Do you like Apple's Jade? <laughs> yeah, of course. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. I'm not so sure there could be anyone in this audience now. So I <laughs> know, ah, look, she's, uh, she's a fantastic mare. Um, I was very lucky to ride her. I think I won five or six grade ones on her. She's a fantastic mare. She's got better and better with age. I think the more racing she's got, the better she, she has got. Um, you know, last year you would have questioned, ha had she trained on, but... To do what she's done this year has been phenomenal. Um, I just, I, 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 when I heard she was going back to two miles, I was a little bit worried because the older horses get sometimes the more they sure. appreciate a step up and trip. But she, she looked as good as she ever did in Leprechaun the last day. And Gordon has done a fantastic job of getting her back. Um, I just, you, you don't know where the mayor is stand against Bouvard Air. Like everybody tries to knock Bouvard Air, but he's still one to champion hurdles you know and uh he's going back for a third time and he jumps so slick apple jade has a tendency to jump a little out to her right when she goes to cheltenham which won't kind of help around there but look we're in for a fantastic race and i won't be riding it but it'll be a race i'll be watching closely because i think it'll be the race of the week all right let's move on to the champion chase and altior um can altior be beaten ollie uh no <laughs> called <laughs> no he can't be beaten i no. know how to get, get him beat you do? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Go on. Oh, I'm the last person to get beat on him. <laughs> Claim to fame, <laughs> yes. <laughs> Is he here? What Is happened? Yeah. yeah. When? Punch Stone. <laughs> Champion bumper. <laughs> Bells Hill did win, though. <laughs> So you, did, you, did you lose or did Bells Hill win? Is that the... I, I lost. I lost. Okay. Bells Hill won. Uh, there was a lot of very good really horses in front of me. And do you get killed <laughs> after a race like that where you're like, oh, Jesus. No, he was an outsider. Barry Gary, she also got beat, not beat on him as well the time before. So, okay. But I technically am the last person. And the bumper too. That Barry, yeah, the bumper <laughs> in England. So yeah, technically. So he is beatable. No, well, <laughs> just, just on the champion hurdle though, there's a lad up there called Biscuits. All right, Biscuits. Uh, we've had a match bet. He's, there's a, plenty of Apples Jade, Jade's fans here. And I, Apples Jade's run three times at Cheltenham. She's been beaten twice. And last year, she got beaten by Benny Dadieu and a horse called Midnight Tour that was 66 to 1. For a horse that's, what, 2 to 1, I think, now for the champion hurdle, she's only one from three at Cheltenham. And, and Bouvardier was beaten by Vidana Blue in the Christmas hurdle. So you don't like either of them? I think Lorena's a... Napping it. <laughs> Thank you. We've won them over. Uh, <laughs> Where are we? Uh, we got there in the end, lads. Uh, I think Lorena's a nap in the champion. Order. I was impressed with her the other day. And there's floor. I know that Brian's point is right. A two time champion hurdler who hasn't got the credit he deserves. Being in the Christmas hurdle, his jumping hasn't been brilliant at every hurdle this year. And Apples Jade's one from three at Cheltenham. I think Lorena. Third favourite is the value in the race. All right. Well, that makes sense. That's a good tip to uh, stick in your notebooks. The stairs hurdle on Thursday. Um, we have here Paisley Park, short price, Penn Hill at 5-1, to one, and Sam Crow at 6, Super Sunday at 6, Faheen at 7. Uh, this is one of those races where it looks like nobody knows what's going to happen. What do you think, Paul? No clue. <laughs> no. <laughs> right, <okay. laughs> It'd be nice to, have to see Sam Crow come back and do something. Um, I know Simon Godwin said he's back in after a break and he's going well, so... Um, but, uh, Paisley Park is probably the story of the season so far with his yeah. owner Andrew Gemmell's blind from birth and we're all fortunate enough to go to Cheltenham and be able to watch the racing and enjoy it you will not find a human being on the planet at a race course that displays as much emotion about a horse race as the man that uh, unfortunately can't see the racing and then his love that he, he got a statue of the horse made after it won at Ascot two starts ago He's now the short price favourite for the stairs hurdle. And that's what I was saying earlier. These stories are, are brilliant. And if he wins, it would, it would raise the roof. Yeah, that's fair enough. John, what do you like? Daisy Park's a banker. Yeah. Thank you for that input. Um, <laughs> I, don't you said a <laughs> I thought you said something else. Right? <laughs> 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 
I, I think it's another open race. Uh, Paisley Park was beaten out the gate. Now, he, he, like he, he, an illness, but he was beaten a long way by, behind Kilbrook and Storm last year at the festival. So um, I think it's a wait and see. It's not a race. Uh, I, you, got, you, you kind of have um, superstitions, and this is a race I, I've never, I don't think I've ever had, had the winner of. So um, you, you, have, you, have, you have some strange. Uh, got to break your duck sometime, John. Yeah, yeah well, hopefully this year. But um, I'd be interested to see who do, who do you fancy, Paul, in the champion hurdle? I see Nicky's post that he, he thinks Belvedere are, but it uh, hurts to be uh, a lot better now for the champion hurdle as well. So Nicky's a fair man now, and when he says he has one right, he's had one right. Um, and the same sort of with the mayor, not winning there twice. Um, I know she's very good in Leprosound. Leprosound is a totally different track than Cheltenham, so um, I'd probably go with Nicky's horse. Right. Do you, are you uh, sifting through all the details of these races at the moment in case you end up in one of them? Yeah, Is that how it works? I'm ringing like every train every day of the week to get more rides. Um, yeah, look, I, I've, it's everything's, everything's up in the air still. Obviously, Willie, Gordon, Henry have a lot of runners over there. So, um, you know, it's, it, I have a couple of rides for the week anyway, so I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, so you know you've got a couple already. And then At the, the minute, yeah, 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 yeah. No, well, listen, yeah. best of luck with that. Is there anything else you want to give anybody any advice about that week? Anything else that tickles your fancy? Uh, no, not really. <laughs> <laughs> So I know, I look, uh, I, I, the car's uh, close uh, to his chest, I, I believe I, that's called. I, um, I, I, uh, <laughs> I ride a horse in the, in that, in the, in the Ballymore called Sam's Profile, I think he's about 16 to 1. He finished second in Ace in a grade 1 behind uh, Basil Overdoy in there a couple of weeks ago and made a bad mistake at the uh, Fort Lass and I think he would have been a lot closer early for that. Now, look, he's a massive price, and he'd be he'd be good each way. Bet I sat on him yesterday after racing, and you know, there's there is no better man than Mouse Morris to get a horse ready, one horse for the Cheltenham Festival. So I couldn't tell you not have a few quid each way. In him. Okay, well that's uh, good information, hot off the press.